Good morning. So we'll uh, start the talk on the, how to manage your supply chain with, uh, with Frepol. Um, the agenda for the next half hour is we'll see what is, uh, what is Frepol, how it works, and uh, show, so, show you some, uh, some workflow and, and, a, and a demo in, uh, in the uh, platform. <clears throat> so Frepol, it's an advanced planning and uh, scheduling system. Uh, allows you to uh, answer all those, uh, those questions listed here. So um, we got some customers facing some uh, supply chain issue during COVID about uh, when, when do they all need to order a product, how many of them, uh, especially with uh, suppliers in, in China and uh, or subcontractors and uh, so when, when should they start manufacturing an item, which, product, uh, which quantity they should uh, be launching. Uh, if some of our <coughs> customers uses uh, machinery and, and uh, equipment, so, or even subcontractors, so which job, uh, which manufacturing order should be assigned to, uh, to who based on skills, based on capacity. Uh, so uh, that's something uh, we'll see how to uh, handle in, in Frepol. Uh, you could answer those questions with, uh, with Odoo. We have uh, uh, customers with those requirements where we say, well, uh, there, we use DDMRP, where they can, we can answer those, uh, those questions here with them. But we found out that for some customers who are used to having a uh, planning process outside of their ERP, they usually use Excel, they usually compile data uh, and have a pretty long process uh, with some uh, mathematical in, uh, algorithm involved. Uh, we had a better uh, feedback from them uh, deploying Frepol, so we'll see uh, when also, so you'll see when to use Frepol and when not. Nice differentiator with the uh, DDMRP is uh, Frepol provides the uh, what if scenario, so you can copy your database and see how a new order will impact your plan. So you can run some simulations, compare some results, and uh, decide on uh, which version of the plan uh, to go with. So how does it work? Uh, so we have uh, on the uh, uh, left side of this diagram, we have the uh, sales order, purchase order, and manufacturing orders sitting in Odoo. What Frepol will do is uh, import all those data uh, in his own uh, database. So we'll read the Odoo data. That can be uh, uh, scheduled every day um, or every week. Uh, based on that data, uh, Frepol will generate a forecast uh, that you can override and we'll see, we'll see how. Uh, you can even change the data from, from Odoo in, in Frepol if you want to bump things down or up. But so based on that, uh, Frepol generated the forecast. Based on the forecast, we'll have uh, uh, and the uh, bombs definition and the uh, lead time from suppliers. Uh, Frepol will pro uh, suggest uh, a, purchasing, a purchasing plan and uh, manufacturing orders. So we can, and we'll see, so you, you can review uh, the suggested data compared with uh, whatever the customer was doing before or compare with whatever DDMRP may be generating in, in Odoo. And you can individually select uh, which records, you uh, modify the records and which records you want to push back to, uh, to Odoo as a draft PO or draft manufacturing order. Uh, and then, um, for the uh, buyers or, or to confirm or the production manager to uh, review and, and plan the, uh, the, uh, the order there. So how does this, this works in real life? Uh, so I have my Odoo instance here with the demo data. Uh, I have my sales order listed here. I have some uh, existing POs and, uh, and MOs. And on the Frepol side, uh, so kind of the same menu here. 
uh, and uh, we got the uh, uh, the way to execute and import the uh, Odoo data. So what happens behind the scene here is it's uh, calling Odoo to uh, generate uh, an XML file and uh, downloading that file uh, uh, in Freppel and creates the uh, uh, re-import the data. I think, uh, yeah. So if I go to my sales order here in, in Freppel, we can see it's not really sales order, it's more sales order line, but you can see the uh, uh, sales order number, the ID of the line, uh, the product, uh, the location, uh, the, the warehouse, and the status of the, uh, the sales order, so the date, everything gets, uh, gets stored in, in Freepol, so we get a copy of the data we can, we can play with. And, uh, and then from, from there, uh, Freepol generates the, uh, the forecast. So here we got uh, our, our demand for the last uh, couple of weeks. And based on that demands and open orders, uh, Freppel will generate a, a forecast for the next couple of months. We can or override that, uh, that forecast here uh, based on the uh, so forecast displayed here is on all items, all location, and all customers. But we can uh, filter with the top seller here and uh, and filter the, uh, the, the diagram and, and figures and extend over, override on the specific products. So that will keep the distributions and uh, update the forecast per, per customer, or we can update it for one customer. So th there's many different ways to, uh, to override the, the forecast here and, and uh, try to uh, modify the uh, demand signal. And so we can, we can scroll down and, and check there. Based on that forecast, uh, I'll spare you the details about constraint and, and resources so that that can be handled in Freppel, but uh, the idea is we got a purchase order uh, being proposed here, purchase order line, with the, uh, the items, the, the, so the product, the location, which supplier to order from, which date and the, uh, the quantity. So if we look at one line here, you can have all the, the details and uh, make some changes if you want to. And uh, even uh, push that PO line back to, uh, to Odoo uh, once you are fine with your, with your plan here. So the, the, the nice thing is the, the planner can, can edit all the data here, run some simulation, do a copy of the database, and, and try some different scenarios so we, we can have access to the different database here and uh, see how it imp so how a change impacts the, uh, the plan uh, and uh, push back the, uh, the data to, uh, to Odoo uh, for the, uh, so in case of a purchase order for the, the purchase team so the buyers can uh, adjust and follow up on, on, the, on the order or to the, uh, we have the same features on the manufacturing order here. So there's no proposed items, but we can uh, make some changes and export to uh, Odoo those uh, manufacturing orders. Any questions on the, on the flow? That was pretty quick. Yep. Say again? Uh, it can, yeah. You can. So everything we can execute in uh, in that uh, uh, op in that menu here, that on that page, that that can be uh, scheduled every day or at any frequency you want. So you can like import the data uh, on a daily basis. Uh, you can. Uh, we rerun the forecast, so that's when we execute the plan. You can you can automate this part here. So generate the forecast, generate the uh, update of the plan uh, uh, based on the on the constraint or not, and uh, 
so you can see every day how your your the reality of what was con confirmed by the uh, buyers or production manager impacts the, your your plan and uh, if a sales salesperson uh, at some point has a, has a big order coming in you can see how, if that fits into the plan or how using the scenario and, and answer whether or not they can deliver and when and th those kinds of uh, uh, disruptive demand can can be taken into account here uh, so that that's the uh, the main idea the Biggest challenge we got, uh, so we implemented this for two customers. One is uh, Strymon here. They sell uh, uh, electronic devices for uh, gu guitar pedals. So uh, big problems with uh, their suppliers in China. They have lead time uh, changed a lot with the, uh, so they have like six or six months or a year of lead time. Uh, it's a lot more with uh, with COVID, so they, they got some some problems. They had a a process uh, where they were compiling Excel spreadsheets. They had uh, big meetings uh, every two months to uh, reevaluate the plan and and, and ma or make the plan for the next period. Uh, with uh, Freepol, we reduced this this three weeks time to a couple hours, so they can. Uh, play with the data without messing up with Odoo and um, automate the whole process uh, to uh, to repeat to repeat the plan or, or even use the, uh, the the scenarios to uh, to see how the 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 plan is impacted by uh, a new order on it. So that's uh, one thing. And the other ones uh, we are still implementing is uh, Astra here. So it's a uh, they build, uh, so their plan is to build one run rocket every month. And one rocket is about 60,000 products with, uh, I don't remember the numbers of suppliers, but same thing like a whole supply chain uh, uh, challenge that, they, uh, they, that we're working on with them. And uh, uh, so same thing like, Prepol helps them uh, provide the uh, planning tools to uh, uh, manage this supply chain and uh, the lead time with their with their suppliers to make sure that they have all the pieces together to uh, uh, not slow down the production of the, the the rockets and the next launch. Any questions? Yep. So if I were to reinforce uh, data back into the do. Um, does it modify existing purchase orders yep. or impacting orders? So it doesn't pick up a conflict by like nope. versions of purchase orders? Nope. It's overrides? It's, uh, so if it's in draft, it will, it will update that, uh, that draft. So if you add a, if there is a PO open for a supplier, it will, and f there is a same product on, on that PO, it will update the quantity of that PO. Yeah. And if it's, if it's if it's already confirmed, then on the next day when you import, you'll show up in uh, in Freepol as uh, waiting to be received, and so it will be accounted for the uh, the plan. So you, the uh, Freepol will assume that within the lead time, you will have those product in stock, and so you don't need to uh, reorder them. And things we haven't shown here is if we go. Uh, so one thing, one good thing is from the uh, Odoo interface, you can access the uh, uh, some uh, Freepol pages. So you can see the forecast from the sales menu here, so that people don't have to uh, log in and out or, or open another window. And one cool feature as well, for example, if we look at a suggested PO. Uh, is below here we have the demand that created that PO line. So why are we ordering that many uh, product at that date? It's because here we have uh, a demand or we have a forecast or we have a, a minimum stock rolls that will uh, explain why we, we, uh, we need to have that, that PO line. 
So if uh, the planner needs to justify to uh, his, his accountant why why are we ordering that much that soon, that that's all the uh, the data there to support the decision. Any other questions? Yep. What are you in the process and how accurate is this? I don't know. That's the whole thing with uh, with Fripol. It's compared to uh, DDMRP. Is DDMRP you can do the the math yourself and with a pencil and paper. With Fripol, it's kind of a black box. There's a lot of things being involved here. I would redirect you to uh, Isham and Johan, who handles the uh, Fripol development. And uh, they they will they could explain you in details how how we get to those numbers, but it's yeah it's pretty complex at some point. Like any other APS software on the market, it's really a black box with some some configuration there, but it's a uh, their secret sauce and yeah. So that there is an open source version of Fripol. Uh, the enterprise one includes uh, what I showed you here, the, the forecast, the planning uh, for POs and, and MOs. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the platform is in Python. It has its own Postgres database and uh, the project is on GitHub. So open to contribution as well. So, okay. Anything else? Yep. Yeah, there is a. It, it can work as a standalone. So yeah, there is a, a user list and, and uh, authentication mechanism. Uh, there's no integration with Odoo, so I think we need. Yeah, you need to be to have this kind of uh, behavior here. You need to be logged in in both with your with your user, and so you can see you can see the uh, the Odoo uh, the uh, Fripol information from the Odoo screen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. So you, you mentioned that the forecasting is a black box for now, but do you know if it's driven from, if the VARs would be driven more from the purchase order, not necessarily from the orders themselves? No, the forecast is driven by your sales history. <coughs> so that's why it imports all the sales order, yeah. and then it tries to... Uh, guess the, uh, the future uh, from there. So I, I don't have much data there with the uh, Odoo uh, demo data set, but for a two or three years uh, customer history, we you can detect the uh, cycles and the seasonality of, of, the, uh, of the demand. Yeah. And the better the data, the better the, the forecast as well. And that, that's where we spend most of our time doing a project is uh, making sure the imports uh, works, we don't have like data conversion issue, and the data is clean, and the data is complete. Like, make sure we have the lead time for each uh, for each suppliers and each product. So, the better the data, the better the the forecast, the better the plan. So, mo most of the time being spent on on a project, and even after, it's uh, cleaning up that that data. And for yeah, Astra, they have 60,000 products. We face some performance issue, but within a couple months, the, that's, that's how long it takes to, uh, it took to, uh, to get them there. And there's also lots of uh, training and, and services involved behind it. So how many months did you say? How many months did you say? Three to four months. Other questions?
so the customers we implemented, they, so those two are on, on Odoo 12. So I don't think there is the uh, forecast tools on that version. And, uh, and that, that's where the, uh, and the nice, so it, again, like it's not for every company or every organization. The, uh, we, we only recommend it when they already have a team of planners. They already have experience with messing up with Excel or any other tools. If they don't, then we uh, did the MRP or those, this is like a lot easier to uh, implement quicker as well. Like you install the module to configure one, one product and some buffers and that, that's it, you're done. They can, it's color coded, it's red, red, orange, green. It's easy to understand, easy to, uh, all the screens in Odoo are already uh, sorted by priority. So the acceptance is, is but for, for companies that already have a teams of planners and they, they, they're looking for those kinds of, of feature there. And the, the what if scenario and the scenario management is a, is, a, is a game changer for them. Like they can mess around with all the data from Odoo without touching Odoo. All right, thank you very much. Thanks.